Good evening. I'm Nancy Lyons, Chair of Family Equality Council's Board of Directors. I'm honored to be here tonight because I am so proud of what we do and so proud to share it with you. The video you're about to see highlights some of what happened since we gathered here last year. It includes our successes, but it also includes new obstacles that have developed, often in response to our progress. And this is a pattern we keep seeing. We have a win, and then we immediately face a new obstacle. As you watch, my challenge for you is this. Ask yourself what you can do to help our successes outnumber our obstacles. You say what you want to say. Watching that video, I hope it's evident that at Family Equality Council, we wake up every single morning ready to win. A year ago tonight, Mississippi, the state with the highest rate of same-sex couples raising children, still had a law on the books that banned same-sex couples from adopting. To help right this wrong, we sued that state to overturn this law. That was in August. In November, lead attorney Roberta Kaplan and her team made their arguments to a judge. And seven months after our first action, we won that case. Yeah. It took just seven months to overturn a decades-old law because it was the right thing. We made progress for those families. But that same week, Mississippi passed a so-called religious liberty bill promoting hate and discrimination. Religious Freedom Restoration Acts, or RIFRAs, as they are referred to, have become our new obstacle. The Mississippi bill is terrible, and we saw it replicated in North Carolina. The new North Carolina law is so dangerous, in fact, that we made the tough decision to postpone our first family weekend in the South, a sold out event with a waiting list, because we could no longer be sure that our families would be safe. And the story keeps getting more unbelievable. In the days since we produced the video you just saw, the Justice Department told North Carolina that their law violates the 1964 Civil Rights Act and gave them until today to repeal the law and remedy those violations. But North Carolina shot back. Just this morning, two of the state's top officials sued the Justice Department, saying last week's demand was a baseless and blatant overreach. McCrory himself told Fox News, it's the federal government being a bully. Really interesting choice of language, I think. These bills don't erase the progress we've made, but they do require us to get more determined, more strategic, and more united than ever. There are children and parents all over the United States whose safety depends on us. As you saw in the video, a family in Utah went through a terrifying experience this year. A judge removed a baby from the home of a lesbian couple who'd been fostering her for three months, citing studies that claim that children are better off with a mother and a father. And while that judge was tearing that family apart, he refused to name the research. This one hit home for me. When we were adopting our son, my partner and I faced an uphill battle. His biological mother very deliberately chose us, but the hospital in Texas, where he was born, was not at all supportive of our adoption, not to mention same-sex adoption. The antagonism and discomfort we felt when we should have been feeling joy and community and love forced us to bundle up our premature son and flee the facility. That was 10 years ago, and still today, this Utah family faced similar ignorance. Within hours of the judge's removal of that baby from the mothers, we spoke with the Washington Post, 
The Daily Beast, and a number of TV news shows to pub publicly condemn this decision. Days later, the judge reversed his removal order, recused himself from the case, and eventually, he resigned from the bench entirely. <laughs> Thankfully, this couple, couple never had to give up their baby, and their adoption is now almost final. Yeah. And family equality has more good news ahead for that Utah couple and LGBTQ parents like them across our country. I am thrilled to announce here tonight that after six years of hard work, the Commissioner for the Administration on Children, Youth, and Families will soon issue a non-discrimination mandate in the provision of foster care funding. This means that no state, agency, or service provider receiving federal funding to provide foster care services will be able to discriminate against prospective foster parents because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. Yeah. Soon discrimination like that faced by the Utah moms will finally be illegal nationwide. And Family Equality Council was the catalyst for this significant national change. With triumph comes new obstacles. Recently, one of our biggest and most long-standing allies, Target, made a statement in direct response to the North Carolina and Mississi Mississippi RIFRAs and publicly announced that their transgender team members and guests were welcome to use the restroom or fitting room facility that corresponds with their gender identity. Like Target, we know these transgender fam friendly policies are the right thing to do. 18 states, DC, and more than 200 municipalities, including the great city of New York, thanks to Mayor de Blasio and his team at the Commission, Commission on Human Rights, led by Carmelin Malalis, who happens to be here with us tonight. Carmelin Malalis. have all implemented laws and policies just like this with zero reported incidents. Immediately after Target released their inclusive position on bathrooms, the American Family Association attacked with an online position that garnered over a million signatures from people pledging to boycott Target. It was an easy decision for us to publicly support our friends and allies at Target, one of our most supportive corporate partners. Certainly you've seen tonight how critical Target volunteers are to this event, and we have a group from their corporate social responsibility here tonight with us. Within days, Family Equality Council created StandWithTarget.com, a social media campaign through which our community could actively support Target's po position on inclusivity via Twitter, email, or Facebook. Within days, it was seen by nearly six million people, and I'm really pleased to announce that tonight, GLAAD and our friends at MoveOn.org have also asked to partner with an additional campaign to further spread this message. The lesson in all of this is we have a lot of work to do before we achieve true legal and lived equality. And we cannot do it alone. We are all in these fights together, and there are still more to come, and they are getting increasingly complex. Behind each of these laws and headlines are children and parents who just want to live in safety. They want equality, and that's why we are asking for your support here tonight. Together, 
We can make a difference in this ongoing fight for equality. We have a responsibility to our children, to our spouses, to our friends and our families to contribute to this fight, to show that we are in it for the win and that these challenges are just fueling our fire to keep going. Family Equality Council is in a position to affect real change. We need to fight for the families who are living these headlines, who are harmed by the hate behind these laws, and they cannot do it without our help. Tonight, right now, it is your turn. Your contributions will help us go back to work tomorrow and keep fighting. Your support isn't just appreciated, it is necessary. When one person speaks out, yes, someone does hear them. But when joined by a hundred voices, it is harder to ignore. And when said with con the conviction that you find here tonight in this room, it demands to be heard. The same is true of your contributions. When one person donates, it makes an impact. But when joined by hundreds of donations, it funds real change. And, with, and when done with generosity, it can change the world. Tonight, please make a difference. Here's your chance. There are pledge cards. We're going to bring the lights up. There are pledge cards on all of your tables. It is time now to stand up and be counted. I choose to believe that there is more love in the world than hate. And your donation helps prove that to families that rely on us for help. Beside us in this fight tonight, there are incredible donors who believe so strongly in the power of your voices that they have generously offered to match your donations with a collective $150,000 match. That means if you join our protector circle by becoming a major donor with at least a $1,200 gift, you will actually be giving $2,400 to family equality. And to you, that's just $100 a month. If you give $5,000 tonight, that becomes $10,000. And if you are someone who can donate $10,000 this evening, your gift becomes $20,000. Family Equality staff are going to walk around the room. They're going to talk to you. They're going to collect your cards. And very soon, you may even receive a text that will allow you to donate very conveniently from your phones. Together, together we can truly change hearts and minds. Our work isn't nearly done. I'm asking each of you here tonight to join me in supporting the work of Family Equality Council and to consider making your most generous gift yet. I'm hoping you'll make a larger gift than you might usually consider. <laughs> Pick up your cards. Get your cards in your hand. Cards in your hands. Give for your children. Give for your friends and your family. Give for your spouse. Give for you. Give for Nick. <laughs> the heck. <laughs> Give for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for coming this evening.